What is the scariest story you know that is 100% true? Nasha train disaster is something that reminds me how death can come at any moment. A train with 51 wagons of sulfur, fertilizer, petrol and cotton wool somehow broke loose and rolled down the track about 20 kilometers until it derailed in the town of Qayyum, Iran. There were no humans on board. Chemical leaks ensued and authorities tried to extinguish whatever fires broke out. At one point, the whole thing explodes. And it really explodes. The whole town of Qayyum is literally demolished, three nearby towns are badly damaged and it was heard 70 kilometers away. The wreckage continued to explode for several days after. Around 300 people died and more than that injured. An earthquake of 3.6 on Richter scale was produced. My friend's boss bought an Audi A4 convertible, back when they were new and interesting. One of the talking points was the pop-up roll hoops that were hidden unless you rolled it. A few months after buying it he got to test those roll hoops out, as he lost control and skidded down a steep bank about 10 meters deep. The roll hoops did their job, and he survived with just cuts and scratches from the bushes he'd plowed through. The car ended up the right way up and he got out, walked back up the bank to the side of the road, then got on the phone to the police to report the accident. While he was standing there a driver from a car that had seen the accident came over to speak to him. Approaching from behind the other driver asked if he was okay. My friend's boss turned around to reply and dropped dead. His neck had been fractured, but was in one piece right up until he turned his head, when it severed his spinal cord. Various torture murders are probably the most horrific things I've read about. Junko Furuta who was a perfectly normal girl until she was kidnapped off the street by a gang for no reason purely wrong place, wrong time, according to Japanese sources, and unimaginably raped and tortured to death over 44 days. Kiki Camarena, a DEA agent in Mexico who was kidnapped by the Guadalajara cartel and tortured to death over about three days. His story is the central focus of the show Narcos, Mexico, but from what I've read, his death was even more brutal than what they make it out to be. A detail consistent in both is that they brought in a doctor to revive him numerous times when he got too close to death, and keep him conscious so he couldn't pass out from the pain. Kellyanne Bates, who was groomed from a young age by a scumbag who eventually killed her slowly over the course of about a month in their apartment. Her injuries were so horrific the jury at the guy's trial had to get counseling. For example, her eyes were missing and there were stab wounds in the sockets. Sylvia Likens whose parents left her in the care of a woman who both personally and with the help of her children and their friends degraded, tortured, and killed over over several months. The Hello Kitty murder in China, where a man and his about 13-year-old girlfriend kidnapped a prostitute who had supposedly stolen from him, even though sources say she had paid him back with interest, tortured her to death, and then stuffed her corpse into a Hello Kitty toy. Baby Brianna, a newborn whose mother, father, and uncle tortured and raped her from the second they brought her home from the hospital until the second she died. Baby P, a British toddler whose mother let her boyfriend torture him to death. His back was broken in his last days of life. Honestly, there are just so many horrifically on par with each other, you could list them all day. One night my son who was 20 at the time got drunk and fell down and was brought home by his buddy James. About a year later James got another friend drunk checked them into a hotel, killed, dismembered and ate some of him. A female friend in college disappeared from a party at another university in the city town 25 miles north of our school. She had arrived with another friend who I believe had driven. At some point she split off to play cornhole or something and was later inexplicably gone. Phone calls went to voicemail, police were called, but she was simply missing. About 10 days later she was found by a homeless man who witnessed her crawling up to a bus stop in the city, begging for help. She had broken a leg and an arm, and was in very bad shape. At the party she had her drink secretly drugged and was then let off by a group of men into their vehicle. She was taken to an apartment where she was drugged, repeatedly raped, and locked in a small room in between with a bucket to use as a bathroom. At one point after being injected with heroin and raped, she somehow managed to convince one of her captors to allow her to use the actual bathroom to clean herself up. This bathroom had a small window to the outside, and with the shower running, she managed to squeeze out and fell from the third story into a large hedge slash bush. From there she crawled from the apartment complex to the road and bus stop, where the homeless man saw her and called police. Many cars stopped upon seeing her, making her captives unable to recapture her. 
Three men were later arrested for the crime after surveillance cameras allowed police to locate the apartment which she jumped from. She returned to our university almost two years later, graduated, and became a nurse. She was obviously traumatized, never partied again, carried a gun everywhere she could, and somehow moved on with life. It was a terrifying tale none of us ever forgot. She was an 18-year-old freshman when the incident happened. Ed Kemper murdered college women because his mother worked at a college and he claims he wanted to destroy everything she loved. He would bury the heads of the women he killed in his mother's backyard. He angled the head to where they were pointed upward facing his mother's bedroom window. He would later say he did this purposely because his mother always wanted to be looked up to. Then, he murdered his mother and decapitated her, raped her head and her body, set her head on a shelf and screamed at it for hours. Then he murdered her best friend and turned himself in. Relaying the whole story in detail, crying. It hurts because I'm not a lizard. I didn't crawl out from under a rock. I came from my mother's vagina. And in a rage, I went right back in. Ed Kemper quote from a police interview. When my aunt was about 16 she was working at a grocery store and had a boss in his mid-twenties. One day he called the house and was begging her to sneak out and hang out with him. She was considering it because it was her boss and she didn't want to say no. My mom, who is two years younger than her, always gets these incredibly spot-on gut feelings. She had won that night and begged my aunt not to go out with him. Thankfully she listened to my mom and told him no which made him really angry. He ended up going out that night and meeting another girl. He took her out to some cliffs and raped her and pushed her off. Somehow she lived through this and was able to get him sent to prison. I feel so sorry for that girl and so thankful for my mom and her gut feelings. Always trust your gut. This is from South Africa. The woman is called Alison Boda and she was abducted, raped and then choked until she blacked out. She was driven into a secluded area, stabbed 30 times in the abdomen and 16 times in the throat and left for dead on the side of the road. She had to use her shirt to keep her organs inside her body and hold her head up because of a damaged muscle in her neck and proceeded to crawl to the road where she was eventually spotted and rescued. She survived the attack and now does motivational speaking I believe. I worked for u Hall when I was 18 and it was located in front of a club that was known for being really sketchy. I came in to open one morning and it was common for people to knock on the door hoping to get in early and get their truck. On this day, I hear frantic knocking on the door. I'm there alone still so it kind of startled me. I look and there's a woman, completely naked, covered in what looks like blood. I called the cops and grabbed one of the moving blankets and went outside to cover her up. She smelled really bad and was a mess. Ended up being blood and her own shit she was covered in. Found out later she was drugged at the club that night slash early morning, raped and left blacked out in the alley. It was just a fucked up and surreal situation to be involved in. Guy goes into a small building and dies. Later, investigator shows up and sees the body, calls 911 and then dies. Paramedics show up to help them, then die. The reason? Oxygen levels at head height were normal. Oxygen levels went bent over was basically zero. Bending over in this room killed four people by asphyxiation. The air they were breathing contained no oxygen. The human body can't tell the difference. Old janitor from high school, friendly Ecuadorian man who went by Ping. Worked at the school for 20 plus years and nobody had a problem with him. I guess his wife was leaving him and in the process of moving out. He caught her in bed with her new man. Next day, in the middle of town, he opened fire on her, the man and then killed himself before any cops had time to respond. A guy I worked with was riding his dirt bike through the woods and somebody hung a cable between two trees. My buddy caught his throat on it and saw the dude steal his dirt bike. Woke up in the hospital with a lacerated throat and a broken larynx. Pretty crazy what somebody will do for something so cheap. The case of Elizabeth Smart. She was kidnapped, repeatedly raped, psychologically tortured, and then brought around in plain sight in heavy religious garb. She had brushes with people who could have helped her. But her kidnapper claimed she wasn't allowed to speak in public or reveal her face for religious reasons. The reason she was rescued is because her sister was awake during her kidnapping and pretended to be asleep. She knew she recognized the voice, but it took her nine months to remember as was a guy that used to do yard work for the family. The police didn't believe her because of the elapsed time, but pursued it to appease the family. 
the story of Mary Vincent always stands out to me. In 1978, 15-year-old Mary was hitchhiking. A man named Lawrence Singleton picked her up. He brutally raped her, and eventually made her get out of the car. She planned to run, but he noticed, and cut both her arms off. He threw her into a ditch-slash-ravine and left her to die. She packed her stumps with mud to stop the bleeding and spent all night crawling out. She eventually makes it to the highway and starts walking, naked and covered in blood. The first car that saw her sped away in fear. The second car was a couple on their honeymoon. They picked her up and she survived. Nutty Putty Cave in Utah was sealed up in 2009 after John Jones was trapped upside down in a small crevice while spelunking. When rescue teams finally arrived he had been upside down for so long that his legs were drained of blood. The only possible way to have gotten him out was to break his legs, which would have sent him into fatal shock. He died after being trapped for 28 hours. His body's still in the cave. Carol Durant was at a shopping mall in Salt Lake City in 1974 when she was approached by a man claiming to be a police officer. He said that someone had tried to break into her car and asked her to come with him. He then said he would drive her to the police station and she got into his car. However, this guy was not a police officer and he did not drive her to the police station but rather, pulled into a parking lot. He then cuffed her, pulled out a gun and threatened to kill her if she resisted. Only, he messed up. He meant to cuff both of her wrist but only managed to cuff one. She escaped and fought him off despite being hit over the head several times. Her kidnapper was dead Bundy. He killed another woman just four hours later. Her escape also helped identify Bundy and she is part of the reason he was eventually arrested.